Let's look at one more aspect of using layer styles. Now we're not done just because this is the last lesson with layer styles. We'll use them more in the coming chapters, but we're just done concentrating on them. Andy, I've got a really good layer style that I made, and I would like to use it more than once. But it's not in the same document. It might be, oh, I don't know, it might be a week from today. So let's open up or reopen up round glass button. Now again, if you didn't save it, you do have under final, if you open it up, the button and the little layer on top that we made to make this work. I want to save that layer style because I think I would like to use it again on another glassing button. And it took a lot of time and effort to put all that together. I've got it written down. But, you know, who wants to do something over again if you don't have to? So, that in mind, go into your Styles panel right here. I am in, remember, the Essentials workspace. If you're there, then you'll see it. If not, you can go to the word Window and go down to Styles. Either way, open it up. Let me get it out of there so we can see it over here. And it's got some styles in it. Not mine yet, but it will in a second. What you do is very simple is select the layer that contains the styles that you want to make part of the styles panel. Now all we really have to do now is just click the new button down here and give it a name. Like cool style. Now yes, of course, I want to include my layer effects, otherwise it wouldn't work. And if I did use any blending options, which I didn't on the layer, we use blending options on the layer styles, they're there. But if we had used, say, a multiply or something on the layer itself, I would have said include that too. Click OK. And there she is. Now, let's go back up here. And let's go ahead and close this out. And maybe create a new layer. Let's turn this one off. In the new layer, we could pick up the same tool, I suppose. Doesn't matter the color, remember. And we can come over here and draw. And then come over here and click the button. Wasn't that hard? Notice it also automatically put the fill of zero on that for us. So everything is done. Let me show you one more way to use this. What if you want a round button? I mean, perfectly round. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and delete that layer. Let's create another new layer. We'll call it round button. Makes sense. Pick up. Over here, under that button, you have one for Ellipse Tool. Select that button. Now again, it doesn't matter what color you choose. Choose anything you want. If I come over here and draw a perfect circle by holding the Shift key down. Now what I'm making is buttons obviously bigger than you normally would make, just so we can see the effect. Buttons on a website aren't quite this big, obviously. But I've got it there. I've got the layer selected. I click the button. Now that's the start. But you say, okay, Andy, when we drew that little kind of like highlight in the other layer, that was a straight line. We need to make a curved one on this, and I agree. So there's a little bit of a trick to this. Let me show you how you might do this. Come up here and control click on the icon for round button. Now doing that is a shortcut for selecting whatever is in the layer. That's a quick way to do it. Come up to the word select on the pull down menu and go down to modify and select Contract. And let's go in about six or seven pixels. And watch what happens. Well, it gets smaller, and that's what we want. The next step is, is to cut almost like a crescent moon shape out of this one. This is where the trick comes in. Pick up your elliptical marquee tool, right there. If we come into the shape, get right about Center. Now, I mean, just go ahead and eyeball it, but try to get about center and then go down into the right. Don't drag yet, but go down and right to about there. So we're down about 45 degrees from center, about three quarters of the way toward the selection. Hold down the Alt key and begin drawing and draw outside this way. Now, here's where the trick is leave your finger on the mouse. Don't let go of the mouse, but let go of the Alt key and then press it again. Now what it does is it allows me to draw out from center. And if you can see that selection up there, I'm trying to make a little thin crescent moon up there. And it might take a little bit of practice to get it just right, and that's all right. 
If you see what you like, let go of the mouse. You can let go of the Alt key. Alt key means take away. We've just made a little crescent up there. Now, make sure your color is white. And before we do that, I need another layer, don't forget. Almost got in trouble there. Our new layer will be the highlight. Call it highlight. Okay, now, over here, we need to fill that with white. My foreground color is white. The easiest way to do this is hold down the Alt key and press the Backspace key. If you're on a Macintosh, hold down the Option key plus the Delete key. Same keys, different names. With that done, I'll press Command D, which is Deselect. And then I'll come up here to the word Filter and select Blur. Now, the last blur we did was a Gaussian blur. But I don't want to just maybe apply the six blur. I may want to change that a little bit. So if you want to, hold the Alt key down right here and click, and it'll open it up for you. And you can decide to make that a little bit more or a little bit less up to you. And these numbers will change based a lot on the size of what you're doing, resolution of the document itself. You have to play around with it just a little bit. If you like that, go ahead and click OK. So we started out by making a style. We applied it to our typical shape, and then we applied it to this one too. And we created the highlight with a little trick to create that little crescent at the top. On to the next.